Yeah. We still at it. We will not let up. Lies are murderers of the truth. And in this house, we seek truth. Now, I talked to you about Solomon. And Solomon is solo man. Solo man is the prophet Muhammad. Solomon, King Solomon, is a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. His name is written in the Hebrew language. In Song of Solomon 5.16. Let's get that scripture real quick. His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is all together Muhammad. This is my beloved and this is my friend. O daughters of Jerusalem. Now, if we go to verse 10, it reads, My beloved is white and ruddy. Now, this is going into the physical attributes of the prophet, the chiefest among 10,000. This is going back to his exploit in 629 CE when he appeared in Mecca with 10,000 Muslims and destroyed the idols. Okay, he is mentioned in your Bible. Now, I'm not lying. Go to Song of Solomon 516 and go to Bible Hub. Go to the Hebrew translation. Lovely was translated from the name Mohammedim. All right. Now, this is all truth. Like I told you before, lies are murderers of the truth. Now, that's a famous quote from Socrates. Now, I want to talk about this Solomon, this solo man, this one man. Who created the religion of Islam. Now it wouldn't be fair. If I didn't share an excerpt. From the Collins Gem Dictionary. Of the Bible. Written by a Christian scholar. Going to the name of Moses. It reads. As a statesman. And lawgiver. Moses is the creator. Of the Jewish people. He found a loose conglomeration of Semitic people, none of whom had never been anything but a slave, and whose ideas of religion were a complete confusion. He led them out and hammered them into a nation with a law and a national pride. And a compelling sense of being chosen by a particular God who was supreme. The only man of history who can be compared even remotely to him that is Moses is Mohammed. Hands down. Hands down. This is coming from a Christian. He's acknowledging the truth that there's only one prophet in history who can be compared to the prophet Moses, and that is Mohammed. Jesus did not create a religion. Moses created a religion. The prophet Mohammed created a religion. And the wolf in sheep clothing by the name of Paul he created a religion, okay? And this is just the truth. Now, in Deuteronomy 18 and 18, it reads, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth, 
and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now, God loved raising up prophets that are like other prophets. That's how you understand the types and the shadows. God will raise up a messenger who will be like another messenger. And who is like the prophet Moses? Moses split the Red Sea. Just like Solomon or Solomon, his kingdom was split. Okay? His first miracle he was going to do was he was about to split a baby boy into two, which is a picture of not only the prophet Muhammad splitting the moon, but also of the prophet Moses when he split the rock. Okay, all those splitting anointings Follow the Deuteronomy 18.18 18 prophet. Solomon split something. Moses split something. And the prophet Mohammed split the moon. As it is recorded in the Holy Quran and in history. Now this one man created the religion of Islam. Just like Moses. This one man created the religion of Israel, all right? Now, you cannot deny that the prophet Muhammad is the prophet like Moses. And Solomon, or Solomon, is a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. Now, let's go to my notes and you'll see that Solomon, his kingdom was split. Damn. And the first God he worshipped outside of the one and only true God was Ashtoreth. All right. And what we see in that is that is a moon goddess. <laughs> so that's how you know the prophet Muhammad. What do they say he worship? What do they say the Muslims worship? Or who rather? The moon God. They call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the moon God. So when you look in the scriptures, you see that Solomon worshipped other gods. Okay. Jesus didn't, okay, but Solomon did. What was that a picture of? That was a picture of the Gentile messenger, the prophet Muhammad, worshiping Allah, whom you say is another God. I have so much, so much on the prophet Muhammad in the types and shadows of Solomon. So, let me get the name of that moon goddess they say he worshipped. Ashtoreth, the moon goddess of the Phoenicians, representing the passive principle in nature, their principal female deity. Frequently associated with the name Baal, the sun god, their chief male deity. So Allah, as a lunar deity, that's what they call him, refers to the postulation that Allah, the name of God in Islam, originated as a moon god. The claim first arose in 1901. In the scholarship of the archaeologist Hugo Winkler, who identified the name Allah with a pre Islamic Arabian deity known as La or Hubal, which he called a lunar deity. So the first Solomon was worshiping Ashtoreth, which is a moon goddess, and the second 
And the last Solomon is accused of worshiping a moon god. Okay. Now, let's go to Proverbs. Because I am going to take you back to Jeremiah 35 today. But let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. And we're going to start at verse 1. The words of King Lemuel. The prophecy that his mother taught him. Now, the prophet Samuel was a type and shadow of the Gentile messenger, Mohammed. Peace and blessings be upon them both. Samuel, you can spell donkey and mule in his name. Okay, the first animal that ever talked and the last animal that ever talked in the Bible was a donkey. That's an unclean animal. That's a type and shadow of the Gentile messenger. When you look at the story in Judges, Samson, he was dying of thirst after he killed a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. He tossed it, but then he began to die of thirst. And so God took that same donkey's jawbone. He claved a hole in a donkey's jawbone. And water gushed out and he drained. Now that donkey's jawbone is a precept to Deuteronomy 18, 18. For God said, I will put my words in his mouth. Now water represents the word. Okay, and God's word came to us the last time through the Holy Quran. So that water in the donkey's jawbone is a picture of God putting his words in the mouth of a Gentile messenger. So when you see the name Lemuel, that is also a picture of the prophet Muhammad. Now I'm going to further prove my point. Verse 1, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, the son of my womb, and what, the son of my vows. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Verse 4 is key. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. So right here, this is a picture of the prophet Muhammad because he teaches us not to drink strong drink or wine. Now, the Bene Israel, they don't follow that commandment. The Christians don't follow that commandment. The nation of Islam, however, we believe in 0% alcohol. Okay? We are that nation that has laws contrary to all other nations. We are that religion. That has laws that is contrary to all others. We don't believe in alcohol. So it was as if King Lemuel was a picture of the prophet Muhammad. And it was as if Solomon's mother was speaking this directly to the prophet Muhammad. We don't drink alcohol. Okay. The prophet Muhammad, he shut down. The last call for alcohol. Okay. He came with the final judgment. Now from studying the Bible. I see that wine represents false teaching. It represents false teaching. And we know that in the parable in Matthew 21. In the vineyard parable. There was a wine press in it. Now that wine press is going into a God-ordained false teaching. Okay, remember the story of Ahab. 
God put a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. God rose up Isaiah to shut the eyes of the people and to misguide the people. Now, God will misguide whom he misguides. And God is a God who will misdirect you. And he has teachings out here that will misguide you. Now, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 14. And we can see what I'm saying in this. Because a lot of people are like, what? What are you talking about? How God is going to misguide or deceive someone. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 14 and let's go to verse 9. And if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Now, God will misdirect whomever he misdirects. God will guide whom he guides. That's one of his names. He is Al-Hadi. He is the guider. He will guide you, okay? And he will misguide you. He did this with Pharaoh. It was God Almighty who hardened the heart of Pharaoh and made him so that he would not let the children of Israel go, so that he might destroy him. OK, that's how God works. His ways are high above our ways as the heavens is high above the earth. So now with that being established that God will misguide and there is a God ordained false teaching. David said this. He said, let their table be made a snare. OK, and what should it have been for their welfare, the Bible, that thing that was supposed to lead and guide them in all truth, let it misguide them, okay? Let their eyes be darkened, okay? That they don't see the truth, be converted, and be healed. You can see all of that in Isaiah chapter 6. God will misguide you, okay? You cannot deceive God. Thinking to deceive God, you will deceive yourself. Now, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 35. Jeremiah chapter 35. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igdaliah, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Messiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. And I set before the sons of the house of Rechabites pots full of wine and cups. And I said unto them, drink ye wine. Now, you know, for a fact, these Israelite camps would have been lapping that up like a dog lap water. They would have been all over the wine and the strong drink. You hear them every Sabbath, bless the wine and the strong drink. Okay? They all over alcohol. The Catholics, they will drink you under the table. Now, the religion of Islam is the only religion worldwide that forbids alcohol. Okay? Verse 6, but they said we will drink no wine. This is Islam right here. Open up your eyes. This is the religion of Islam. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Now, God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one who commanded us not to drink. Our Father, God Almighty, is the one who who commanded us not to drink. Verse 7, Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, 
nor have any, but all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, and all that he have charged us to drink no wine all our days. We, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters. This is the complete family. Nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor sea. But we have dwelt in tents and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab our father commanded us. But it came to pass when Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up into the land that we said come. And let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell at Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will ye not receive instruction to hearken to my words? Saith the Lord, The words of Jonadab the son of Rechab, that he have commanded his sons not to drink, are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hearken not unto me. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets. Prophets are servants. Prophets are not gods. Christians wake up. Rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now, every man, from his evil way, and amend your doings, change your ways, and go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers, but you have not inclined your ear nor hearkened unto me. Because the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but this people have not hearkened unto me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard, and I have called unto them, but they have not answered. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according unto all that he hath commanded you, therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab the son of Rechab shall not want a man to stand before me for Ever. So we know according to Islam, the prophet Muhammad was the last and final messenger. He is the chief of the prophets. He was the last and final messenger. It's just like fireworks. Okay. When you get to the end, then you have the grand finale. Okay. And it's like that with the prophet Muhammad. He was the last and final lawgiver. OK, and so the Most High has honored him. We do not worship no man. OK, that's forbidden. That's one of the greatest sins. OK, in the Quran, it tells us that the prophet Muhammad is nothing more than a messenger and that the Messiah, peace be upon him, Jesus is nothing more than a messenger. Peace be upon them both. OK, and we have the perfect balance. We are told that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And we ought to never associate any partner with the most high God. See, we have a perfect balance in Islam. And we know that God will send the Mahdi at the proper time. We don't need to go crazy like these people are. When it's his time to arrive, he will arrive, okay? And we know that he will be accompanied 
by the prophet Isa, peace be upon him, and the cross will be destroyed, and we will live in a time of justice after the Antichrist is destroyed. And we know that the killing of the firstborn, that is the prophet Isa, will cause many to mourn, and God will gain his renown, fame, and glory when he shows the world that Jesus is not God, that he is God, and there is none else. So with the story I just showed you in Jeremiah chapter 35, you see the nation of Israel has failed. You see, the religion of Christianity has failed. The religion that God loves is the religion of the Rechabites, which is a picture of the religion of Islam. All right. Now, I encourage you to stop judging a book by its cover. I've been studying the Bible for 20 years. OK, I've been all over Christianity. OK, and I realize that Christianity is idolatry and it is the highest form of witchcraft. The religion that God loves is the monotheistic religion of Islam. All right. With that being said, I encourage you to study everything that I'm bringing out against Paul. Jesus warned us of a wolf in sheep clothing that would come after he depart and deceive many with false signs and miracles. That man from the tribe of Benjamin, whose symbol is the wolf, is your boy, Paul. He teaches the opposite of God. He is the enemy of God. The Bible says Judah's hands shall be in the neck of his enemies. Now, I'm going to show you some scripture on them weeping on Paul's neck in the book of Acts. You're going to see Judah's hands shall be in the neck of his enemies. This is going to be Acts chapter 20, verse 37, and they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. Okay, this is a picture of God Almighty getting his vengeance on this religion we call the house of Saul, the house of Christianity, whose Founder and father is Paul. Now, let me show you the scripture where this originates. This is going to be in Genesis 49 and 10. Oh, I got some stuff for you today. Let's go up to verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brother shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Who is the enemy of God? Who is the enemy of God? His name is Bulas in the Arabic tongue. That is Paul. Now, there's many types and shadows of Paul. He is also called Potiphar. Okay, Potiphar, see, with the fur. And Joseph would not touch Potiphar's wife. What does that mean? Jesus would not touch Paul's church. And we have another picture of your boy, Paul. In the story in the Apocrypha, his name is Hollow Furnace. Get it? Hollow Furnace. Fur. The fur. The wolf in sheep clothing. Now, how did he die? Let's get that. Now, before we get that, we have to understand Judah. Read the Apocrypha for yourself. I'm not going to give it all to you. You have to do your own studying. But the book is named after a woman by the name of Judah. 
Now get this. Every time this woman prayed, she washed herself. Okay? This woman is a picture of the house of David. And this is a picture of the house of David warring with the house of Saul. What is that? Islam and Christianity is going to continue to be at war until it's all over. Now, this woman, she corrected her people because they put time limits on God. And they had false teaching. They believed that they were being punished for their fathers. And Holofernes cut off the water supply. And the children of Israel were about to become servants if God didn't rescue them in five days. So this woman, she goes down to the camp of the Assyrians and this woman kills Hollow Fernes, which is a picture of Paul or the religion of Christianity. I'm going to show you how Hollow Fernes went out. This is going to be in the book of Judah. Let's go to chapter 13, verse 5. For now is the time to help thine inheritance and to execute thine enterprises to the destruction of the enemies which are risen against us. Then she came to the pillar. You know men are called pillars in the New Testament. She came to the pillar of the bed, which was at Holofernes' head, and took down his fascion from thence, and approached to his bed, and took hold of the hair of his head, and said, Strengthen me, O Lord, God of Israel, this day. And she smote twice upon his neck. With all her might. And she took away his head from him. Now this is a picture of Paul. Paul is the one who teaches that Christ is the head of every man. And this is a picture of Judith. As the Bible says. Judah hands shall be in the neck of his enemy. Christianity is going to lose its power one day. And after we tip over the pillars, after we tip over Paul, this religion is going to come down crashing, especially with the killing of the firstborn and that is prophet Isa in the last day. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.